everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 112. Today I'm going to talk about Chicago Express. Uh, this is a train game, and it is probably. See, I'm not an expert on this stuff now, so you're going to have to cut me some slack. It's probably a gateway game into the 18xx stuff. Okay, it's not like Age of Steam or Steam and that kind of Martin Wallacey train game. Uh, it, this is actually a reprint of a what's called a winsome train game called Wabash Cannonball, which is a lot cooler name. I don't know, Chicago Express is pretty cool. I like Wabash Cannonball, which is actually like an old uh, old folk song or something. I can't remember. Uh, so this is a game played supposedly, what is it, two to f six? Uh, I haven't played it with six. I played it with two and two is horrible. <laughs> I hate this game with two people. If you want to get this to play with two people, don't play it. Oh, it's not very good at all. But I played it with three and four, and uh, I haven't played it with five or six, but uh, three and four seems to work really well. Uh, I think I like it with four better. This is kind of more going on, more to sort of get your meat, your meat hooks into. Uh, so let me show you how it plays. It's actually a very, very simple game. I've actually played this with, i got a couple of groups of people I play with. Uh, you know, what you call seasoned gamers that'll play stuff you know more heavy things things that take a few hours and then you know my family and stuff like that and then like a lunch group and some other folks too but uh played this with the family and they enjoyed it for a little while but uh we kind of went back to airlines europe with them so uh this again it's tough i'm trying to get to the explanation let me review a little bit here uh it's i don't think everybody's gonna like this one i, know, I like this one quite a bit but Seems like most people I've talked to don't like it, uh, you know, that I've played it with. And it's easy enough for the family type of group to get into and play, for sure. Um, and to play uh, relatively well, I think. So, and I try to stay away from like strategy articles and stuff, but I have dipped into that with this game. Um, so, probably not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to play that with your family, because then it's like, oh, holy cow, you could do this? Um, so it's it's kind of a tricky, kind of toes that line. Um, so this is a good sort of warm-up, I would say, maybe even a filler, because you can play this really quick, to getting into an 18xx game. You know, again, speculation on there, not a big 18xx guy. So I would say I enjoy the game. I recommend it. It's very simple, very straightforward rules, like really basic. and But there's a lot of... You know subtleties that can happen in the game so let's take a look at how it plays and then i'll come back and play more about it okay so let me give you a quick sort of components overview here you've got the main board you got these different hexes here now you can see you've got four basic uh train companies so you got the yellow train the blue train the red train and then the green train up there there's also a black train company and this is the wabash railroad uh, you don't start the game with this in play you only start with these four so during the course of the game, you're going to build track, which is sim symbolized by these little trains here. And so the yellow guy, he's got to start here, and then you can build, when you build track, you can build up to three. So you just kind of go out here, you'll connect to different cities, you've always got to build adjacent to each other. And you're sometimes trying to get all the way over to Chicago. And that will give a nice uh, payout bonus for whoever has the, you know, shares in yellow. So it is a stock game, there are a limited amount of stocks in the game. Also a limited amount of trains in the different colors. So you can see on the board here, we've got the Wabash guy, which remember isn't in play. And so he's got a little board that says there's two, so there's the two stocks and there's 11 trains. These are finite here. Any money that you pay into when you buy shares goes into the company itself instead of back to the bank. And then there are boards for the four main uh, railroads. Uh, so you can see red has 19 trains that you can build or 19 track and then three shares and then here's a little spot to put the money in there and all of the money and everything is available for people to see there's no hidden information and that's really an important part of the game so everybody's able to see how much money is in a company at any given time as well as how much money that the players have at any time and it's got this paper money which isn't too bad it's pretty good stuff so over here, you have these three dials, and these are pretty cool little components here. So on your turn, you're gonna take one action, and you have three possible choices uh, that you can take. So you can either do an auction action, or you can do sort of a building action, or a laying track action. 
And when you do that, you just simply rotate the little dial there to symbolize that you've taken that action. So now, once this gets to the red, so let's say I took a building action, Billy, Frank, and then Jessica took one. So once that's in red, nobody can take any more building actions for that round. And then as soon as two of the dials hit the red, so let's say this guy took an auction, and then we did some buildings, and then some lane track. As soon as that hits uh, the red, and there's two of these dials that are in the red, that round's going to end immediately. We're going to do a payout based on how many shares people have and the value of the train. And then these are going to reset, and then we'll start the next round. Now every time we have an end of round situation, this little marker here where Detroit is, is going to increase in value like so. So one of the ways that the game will end is if this ever hits the 8, then that will signify this is going to be the last round. So there's basically going to be a maximum of 8 rounds. There are two other ways that the game can end, and that is if three of the trains that are in play either run out of train tracks or run out of shares. So if the yellow, green, and red all ran out of shares, that would be the last round of the game. We'd finish the roundup, and that would be it. Or if the blue, green, and red ran out of trains, that would signify the end of the game. So to start the game, you can see these little uh, colored numbers here show you the starting value of each of the different railroads. So the game's going to start off by auctioning off a share of red. So players will start off with some money. Uh, basically, it's 120 bucks divided by the number of players. So in a two-player game, each player will start with 60. And then we'll auction off red. Whoever wins that will then get the first bid of the blue guy. And the next one is the yellow one gets auctioned off. And then a share of green gets auctioned off. Once all of that's done, then whoever has a share of red is going to be the start player. So you can see here, yellow is actually further away than Chicago, from Chicago up at the top. Blue is a little bit closer and red and then green sort of has a little bit easier time because it's going through these forested areas instead of these mountain areas where it's costing you more to go through the different terrain. And yellow, as compared to red, let's say, has more trains, they have 25 trains and six shares available, whereas red only has 19 and three. So that's something you have to keep in mind, and that's going to be something subtle that's going to take you a few plays to sort of uh, wrap your head around and how these different uh, railroads are going to behave. So first let's take a look at the auction action. So let's say I had the stock in red, I wanted to take an auction action, I take this, flip it up, then I'm going to choose a share to auction up. I can auction up any share, except of course for the Wabash share, because you can't do that yet, and I'll explain how that works in a minute. So let's say I wanted to auction off another red share. Now, the minimum bid that has to be for that share is wherever this guy currently is on the income. So even at the start of the game, you've got to at least pay seven to get this red guy. So if I wanted to immediately auction off another red share, I'd auction it off for seven, and then we go around, and basically go round and round and round, round robin style, and whoever has the, uh, doesn't pass, and then has to pay that money into, remember, the company. So that's how the auction works. It's pretty simple, but this is really kind of the basically the heart of the game is knowing when to call these auctions because players' cash flow is going to be limited. You know, you're going to see who has more shares in different companies and kind of base your decisions on that because at the end of the rounds, the payout's going to go to more to the player who has the most shares in that company. And let's skip the building for now and then we'll look at the uh, laying track action. So you Turn the marker there, and then you're going to lay track. Now to lay track, you have to own at least one share in that company. So if I had at least one share in yellow, I could lay up to three trains and then pay for those tracks to be laid out of that company's charter here, basically out of any money that was on the charter. So remember, when you buy a share, it, money goes into the charter. So this gives it seed money to lay future track. So you can see the cost is going to vary based on the terrain. So it's going to cost you a buck to lay a track in one of these planes here. It's going to cost you two bucks to lay it in the forest. It's going to cost you two bucks to lay this in the city. But you can see the city actually has the added benefit of increasing the income of a train that was laid in there. You can see here's the minus two. The cost is always in the red. Okay. 
but when you lay this in here, you're going to actually add two to Yellow's income. So whenever you increase a train company's income, you just move this up the track there, and then that's the amount of income it's going to pay out uh, as a base value uh, whenever you pay dividends at the end of the round. Now the other thing to keep in mind, especially in the middle of the board here, is you may have air or not airlines, but train companies that intersect each other. So if blue were to come in here, and let's say they were like that, then they got in here cheap. They were able to get in there for two bucks and then four bucks for there. But then if red comes along here and they place here, and then they want to place in here, let's say, and run their track through there, they're gonna to have to pay whatever this number is here in red two times the number of companies that are going to be in here including themselves so they're basically going to pay four bucks here or if they were to go in here they would pay eight so four times two so as more and more companies you know get and try to buy for these some of these cities in here and some of these cities in the middle are pretty valuable it's going to cost you more out of the company's charter to get in there now there's a couple of special cities here uh, these two are in the middle of the board wheeling and pittsburgh now normally when you connect to a city it'll give you a little bump or some of these other hexes. So if you connect here to uh, Youngstown, you get a bonus of plus one on your income scale. But if you look at Pittsburgh and Wheeling, they have these special little icons here. And so if you look here, we've got three cities on this track. We've got Detroit, which remember is just gonna go up every time we have a round, we have a dividend and a payout. So this is actually gonna get worth more, uh, you know, every round of the game. Now Wheeling and Pittsburgh, they're going to start off with a little bit of a bump. So instead of just the normal plus one or even plus two of some of the other cities on the board, this is going to be variable. So the first time you connect to Wheeling, let's say, and nothing's been developed there, you're going to get a bump of plus three on your income track and Pittsburgh of plus four. So how do we get Wheeling and Pittsburgh to be worth more? How do we increase their value on this track? Remember, Detroit just goes up every round. Let's look at how we get those up. And that's where we come to this building action. So if you take the building action then you can basically just take one of these houses and place them on the board. So if you look at one of these regular cities here, you can see, okay, if I connect to Roanoke here, I'll get a plus one. But if I develop on there, then this will actually bump up any other, uh, you know, tracks that are already connected there, another plus one from taking that development or that building action. Or here, in the case of this four or a mountain area, uh, you know, you can get a plus two there. Whereas if you do development, on Wheeling or Pittsburgh, then these are going to bump up this track here. So you can see Pittsburgh actually bumps up two points from four, and if you did it twice, all the way to eight. And remember, Detroit is just going to go up every round. You actually won't put buildings or houses in here ever. It's just going to keep going up and up and up every time you have a round. So you have to remember to increase the income value of any uh, you know railroads that are in there every time you end the round. Okay, let's talk about Chicago here. And this is a difficult place to get, especially as you get more experience in the game. Uh, so if you connect there, you're going to immediately get a plus seven. But it costs you three to place there. And as soon as you connect to Chicago, you're going to do an immediate dividend payout uh, for the railroad that connected there. And I'll talk about dividend payouts in a second. The other thing that's going to happen with Chicago is the first company that comes in there is basically going to activate this Wabash Railroad here. So after you pay out the dividend for Chicago, then you're going to auction off a share of Wabash. Now there's only two shares of these, and there's not a lot of track. The other thing though is that it's very close to Chicago already, so it's easy to make a quick connection there. So you can see there's just a few tracks there, uh, you know, for it to connect to Chicago. And it's also very close to Detroit and relatively close to some of these other cities there. So this is kind of a really kind of interesting mechanism of the game, is you're building all of these, you know, main companies here, but then if this Wabash triggers off, then it kind of, you know, it becomes something else kind of comes into play, kind of throws the balance off a little bit. So let's talk about dividends and how they're paid out. So dividends are basically wherever this marker is on the income track, then you're going to pay out that amount divided by the number of shares that are in play that have actually been auctioned off. So let's say green was up here at 20 bucks uh, income. And then I had two green shares and you had one green share. So we're going to take that, the total number of shares in play, which is three. Let's, here, let's make this easy. Let's say there's 21, so divided by three, so that's seven bucks a piece per share. So uh, whoever had the one share would get seven, and then the other person with two shares would get 14. And that's how you, uh, you pay out the dividend. So that's going to happen, remember, at the end of every round, whenever two of these are red, and then also when Chicago uh, is connected to by whatever uh, particular color of 
company. And that's pretty much the game, all the basics of how to play. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Um, I'm kind of a two minds about this game. Uh, I think this is really interesting game. Very, very interesting. <laughs> so, let me go on a little bit of a limb and say I think this would actually be a good gateway game in general. Okay? Now, I've discussed that with some people before. And they think I'm crazy for thinking that. But I don't think so. Because like I said, I've played this with my family group who enjoy games. But they're not gamers. They've never really heard of Board Game Geek. Uh, other than what I've told them about it. And, but, you know, they are, and these are adult family, not kids, you know, right? So, they, you know, they know how to manage a pocketbook. They know how to, man, you know, budget. They know about sort of uh, wheeling and dealing, um, sort of, not, not price fixing, but, you know, trying to get the best deal and, you know, a little bit of business acumen there. So, you know, those people play games too. Um, and I think this is kind of up their alley. Now, they have grown sort of, this particular family of mine has not grown uh, fond of it. They were liked it at first and now they don't like it because there is a little bit of scrooge that you can do. So example, I'm getting into strategy and I get a little leery of talking about this but in review, but let's say I have two shares of green and I'm running that sucker right up to Chicago. I want to get the big payout want to activate Wabash, all that good stuff. So I'm also broke. <laughs> and so Billy buys a share, a share, auctions up a share of green, takes it for five bucks, let's say, picking the number out of thin air, and then proceeds to build track on the following turn, wasting my track in some random planes on the right-hand side of the board. <laughs> so I can no longer connect to Chicago or Detroit or whatever, right? And so he's done that for a fair amount, but seeing that I'm probably in the lead because everything's open information, he's able to figure that out. Um, so that makes the game sort of vicious, I would say. Um, so I think that, that kicks it out of the gateway um, idea. But if everybody's kind of playing it easygoing, and you know, you, you, if you're a real kind of brutal, you know, you're a gamer, right? Uh, you know, and you can kind of hold back that that knife a little bit, then I think they're going to enjoy it. So, but the game is very dry as well. So I think, it, which lends it towards that 18xx family, very dry, very mathy, very calculable almost in a way, uh, especially with less players, which is why two players is just a nightmare because it's just, oh, I'm going to add these numbers up. I bid 17 for that <laughs> because that's exactly the right number or whatever it is. Um, that's kind of lame, but, uh, with a few more players, you know, three or four, it's fine, I think. And if people can play it easy going, you can get this done in under an hour. Um, if people are, are experienced with it and just kind of play a little bit of seat of their pants. So it kind of straddles a lot of different aspects of the game. I enjoy it, you know, but I think I'm one of the few that does. I, I love the stock part of it. I love to play games where you can leech a little bit and you know uh, and try to take second place in everything you know that's one of the things you can do in airlines Europe is like okay well great you you're all the way up on this company and getting 35 bucks around or whatever the thing is and but I'm getting second place in everything or something you know I'm exaggerating but you know I love that kind of aspect of that and sort of uh, trying to be a little bit sly you know with what I'm trying to do and things like that and this plays in a short enough fillery kind of way that I think that's really cool, and that's really sort of you know, admirable or something. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty cool how they got were able to accomplish that in a game that should take you about an hour or less. So this kind of fits in that same, like I said, Airlines Europe, uh, Acquire. Um, there's some other games that implement this, like Rapa Nui is a game that's really a stock game. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, I would check that out. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm having a hard time saying, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, I give it a thumbs up, but I can see the dryness and the sort of mathiness and the brutality putting people off because, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to get screwed. So anyway, it's a good game. So if you're interested in train games, I would say pick it up. If you've been playing, I don't know, Ticket to Ride or something or some other really light game, then you want to sort of dip into that 
brutal sort of curmudgeonly auction you know thing where you kind of muscle people with the auctions i really like that aspect of it's kind of the auction part is really sort of the heart of the game i think in my opinion is sort of okay i'm gonna auction up this share dude you know are you low on money but you don't want to lose controlling interest in this thing or let some uh, you know, jerk, take control of a share and then screw you out of connecting to something nice. But then again, if you want the share, you got to pay for it. <laughs> and so, you you know, you're going to go lower. You're going to maybe get a little bit more income on the income round. But what is that worth? So that mathing calculation kind of comes in and the brutality, the kind of coldness comes in. But, you know, I like it. So I probably scared like everybody away. <laughs> so... Anyway, that's the game. Thanks.